सो यू टॉक अबाउट सेक्स डी असाइनमेंट सर्जरी सो डू हिजड़ाज गो थ्रू दीज सर्जरीज वेल विद इन द हिजरा कम्युनिटी अ लार्ज परसेंटेज अ सिग्निफिकेंट परसेंटेज ऑफ हिजराज गो थ्रू कैस्ट्रेशन एंड दिस कैस्ट्रेशन creates a process of feminization but is by no means it can be called a sex reassignment surgery it's very primitive but the reason for that is often because they cannot afford anything more because sex reassignment surgery is not developed in india uh, because it's too controversial uh, and uh, even those who uh, come from affluent families might have to go to another country to go through sex reassignment surgery so the hijras uh, they just undergo castration not all hijras go through castration some of them remain in the community and they just go through some kind of hormone implants you know to get breasts or to look more feminine uh, so uh, that is also accepted by the community uh, but the community will want some kind of action to be taken some kind of medical or surgical intervention to be show that this person is a bona fide transsexual in the uk for instance uh, if you can establish that you suffer from gender identity diaspora you will be evaluated they will uh, review your case if the physicians are convinced that yes this is a genuine case of a person belonging to one sex who feels the psychological identity of another sex they will recommend surgery so is it true that the hijra community kidnaps young boys or is, is it just some rumors that are spread around uh that's a completely false rumor that is spread around it's uh, rumors like this which have given rise partly to the great prejudice that uh, confronts the hijra community there is no question that this happens uh these are just rumors uh serena nanda she interviewed hundreds of hijras so did mr sk sharma in his book hijras the label deviants they interviewed hundreds of such cases they never found a single case of somebody who had been kidnapped as a young male child and uh, then you know converted or when he attained puberty in fact when you see the hijra community when they go uh, at weddings or they go you know to collect uh, arms you never find children with them so if they were kidnapping these children they would be taking the children also where would they hide the children the children would be forced to live in the hovels uh, something like this would have been exploded as a story by journalists decades ago it doesn't happen there are researchers who interviewed dozens and hundreds of hijras they haven't found any such cases there might be some stray instance uh, but uh, uh, in general this never happens it's just a canard it's just a myth that has been surrounded uh, that has uh, probably been spread because of ignorance people don't understand so they, why anybody would want to change his physical sex if you are not suffering from gender diaspora yourself you might not be able to understand how somebody might want to do this so you think of explanations and this is a convenient explanation or oh, young boys are kidnapped and then uh, they are kept somewhere they are uh, you know once they atta- attain puberty then they are castrated forcibly and then they are forced to join the community it's just false there is no truth to it at all and uh, uh, this is one of the things which i wanted to write about to dispel some of the great prejudice that surrounds this community I should add that one of the reasons why there is more prejudice against hijras than against transsexuals in other countries is because hijras do look ugly. You know, they look ugly because the castration is very primitive. So then they just look from the point of view of men and women they look abnormal. Whereas in other communities for example if he goes to East Asia there you have of course proper sex reassignment surgery uh, but there even through the use of hormones because the male female difference is not so much uh, uh, the transsexuals they are not subjected to the same kind of great prejudice which uh, 
is there in India, not only in India, in Pakistan, in Bangladesh, in Sri Lanka, the entire South Asian region, uh, there is this great prejudice uh, that surrounds this community. It's part of the reason also that they have to be together because the hijra on his own cannot survive. So they have to band together, they have to support each other and, uh, uh, you know, try to eke out some kind of a miserable existence uh, given that the British got rid of their hereditary rights which they had acquired under uh, pre-colonial uh, administrations in various uh, uh, provinces ruled by benevolent kings. And is it true that apart from begging the hijras they you know practice prostitution? Uh, yes, it is true. Uh, but here I'd like to say two or three things. One is, of course, that the Indian view uh, on prostitution is very antiquated. It's not necessarily very forward-looking in today's times. Uh, but that's a subject for another discussion. With regard to the Hijra community, uh, yes, there is prostitution, but that's because they've been left, for, left with such few alternatives in terms of earning a livelihood. Even the Hijra Hijras used to come to my office. In the beginning, some of them were surprised why I was interested in talking to them. And uh, one of them, I think, imagined that I was looking for some sexual favors. So she would catch hold of my hand and she would uh, twist my fingers mischievously, uh, trying to elicit some kind of a reaction that maybe I would want to carry some sexual favors with her. And then after some time, it became clear to them that no, I just wanted to talk to them, I just wanted to know them. And uh, interestingly, I should mention that they are people just like us. They are neither better nor worse than us. Just like gays are neither better nor worse than us, so are the hijras. They are subjected to the... Uh, they are often have the similar prejudices. So one of the things that surprised me was that despite suffering from so much prejudice from the outside general community, they had their own small prejudices within. So, for example, the hijras from Tamil Nadu, they didn't like the hijras from Kerala. And uh, they would say, oh, those Kerala hijras are not good. We Tamilians are much better. They had issues of caste, that I am a hijra, but I actually came from a higher caste. And these other people are from low caste. So, they also suffer from all these, you know, uh, small little prejudices. They are not necessarily more enlightened. Some of them are exploited by gurus. That is quite common, that many of them, you know, they fall into the grip of charlatans or so-called gurus who fleece them, who take money from them. Uh, so there is this kind of internal uh, divide and uh, quite often they are not as united as a community as they should be. Alright, so you finally decided to publish your dissertation in the form of a book. So was finding a publisher hard? Yes, so Ananya, as I mentioned, um, I decided to do my dissertation on this topic and once and I had finished the book then of course the next question was get my dissertation published in the form of a book uh, and I thought I want to publish it in India because it concerns the Hijra community uh, why should I be publishing publishing it in the West in the form of a two academic treatise and in fact all the books I've written even on technical subjects I wanted them to appeal to a general audience so I was looking for a publisher who would write something which would find a broader readership. But it wasn't easy. Uh, then it occurred to me that let me find a publisher who has already published a book which is similar to this. And that was not so difficult to find because there were hardly any books on hijras. In India at that time, there was only Mr. Sharma's book, Hijras, the Label Deviants. So I checked out the publisher and I contacted the publisher and he said, I'm happy to publish your book because I know exactly how to market it. So he was of course looking at it from a commercial point of view. He had marketed Sharma's book which had uh, elicited interest overseas and he said I know exactly how to publish your book so let's go ahead with it. As a matter of fact, after publishing the book, it got a very good response not only in India but overseas also. Uh, so there was a kind of uh, Mr. Sharma was not too happy because his book had not got that kind of response. This is what the publisher told me. 
and I imagine that that is because it was his book was more sociological, whereas mine was talking about human rights. Uh, neither Mrs. Serena Nanda nor Sharma nor many of the other writers on hijras had thought of focusing on the rights, uh, on the abuse to which they are subjected. They were writing on them as a sociological category and not treating them as human beings just like you and me. Uh, so this book attracted a lot of attention. Uh, the Asian Age actually, and their Sunday supplement, this was their cover story. Uh, they excerpted the book over four or five pages. At that time, the Asian Age used to be published both from Delhi and from London. So I had friends in Nottingham who bought the copy, who bought the newspaper in London. Uh, so it got uh, a fair amount of publicity. The book sold very well. It became prescribed in many universities overseas in Melbourne University, in American universities, uh, because uh, it was talking about a community who had not been used, viewed through the prism of human rights at that stage. Today there's much talk about it, but at that time all this was very new. So uh, I was very pleased uh, that uh, something which I had wanted to do, and when I thought about it, I thought maybe this was the better way to go. Uh, because had I filed a case, I would not have at that stage understood the community as well as I did after doing research on them. So maybe publishing a book was the way to go forward. And uh, the reviews have been good. Within the academic community also people have said, Rajesh, you have explained everything so simply that it makes it so much easier for us, uh, even for a lay person to understand uh, the situation of the hijra how they are similar to transsexuals, how they are different, and uh, what has been the historical context, uh, what are the laws that need to be changed to accommodate them, uh, what the future holds for them, how we need to become more open as a society. So, uh, yeah, so the book came out. Uh, we spent quite some time together, the publisher and I, looking for a face on the cover. So if you see the cover, uh, it has a hijra's face, uh, but it's a sensitive face. Uh, so sometimes uh, hijras are discriminated against uh, because they look, you know, they have big teeth, because the uh, castration has happened, uh, but they have not really become feminized. Uh, so people are prejudiced because of their appearance. They look a bit scary to other people. So, uh, so we went through lots of uh, photographs. We found some a photograph which was suitably sensitive, uh, which would set the context. And uh, so I'm very pleased. Uh, later on, in fact, uh, the same people who had told me uh, among the community working with AIDS on AIDS issues, they said, you were right. We should have filed that case. You were right. We had a wrong view of hijras. We misunderstood them. So uh, things are different today there is much greater awareness though I suspect there is also a fair amount of ignorance on the subject. So uh, the book continues to sell, it continues to remain relevant and I hope uh, we will become more open as a society uh, as time passes and the community will advance. I suspect that uh, uh, more and more hijras will go in for full reassignment surgery. Many of them will lead lives independent from the community they will just be in the form of male to female transsexuals or female to male transsexuals. This will become an option. One more thing I should add that although I explained that the hijra, hijras never kidnap people and 95% of them are male to female transsexual, there is a small category of hermaphrodites who also are part of the hijra community. Hermaphrodites are children who are born with both sexual organs, maybe testes as well as ovaries. Uh, so there are different kinds of hermaphroditism. There are five kinds of hermaphrodites. I won't go into the discussion, uh, but these are children who are born with organs of both sexes. So some of them, a very small minority, because it's a very rare phenomena in nature, 
they also form part of the ijda community so uh, uh, yes like every episode we hope this one was very informational as well and we all got to learn something new mr talwar thank you for being with us as usual thanks ananya it's always been a pleasure uh, talking to you about these books and thanks to your team as well uh, before signing off i should mention you know that one thing leads to another uh, my book on the gay community on uh, section 377 inside gay land which we discussed in our last episode uh, that in a way led to my next book which was on the hijra community the third sex and human rights and then this uh, led me to consider our ideas on aesthetics on ugliness and beauty and this influenced the course of uh, writing my next book which was a novel called simran uh, which we might discuss in some future episode what is interesting about simran is that simran has two characters who are transsexuals and who are both positively featured i noticed that in uh, cinema particularly the hijras are generally not well represented so uh, i remember seeing a bollywood movie in which the hijra is running a crime racket of course hijras can be evil but they are quite often they have been portrayed negatively in uh, more recent literature so uh, so my novel is an attempt to correct that but we will discuss simran as in some future episode Uh, there's lots more we could speak about uh, and i would invite those who watch this episode to read the book uh, but for the time being i guess we have enough and uh, thank you very much uh, look forward to being with you to discuss something else in the next episode thank you for staying with us thank you for watching those episodes of our series this is your host ananya sharma signing off for today